do let's see how oh there it is <laughs> okay Ooh. it's you hello <laughs> And just so you can see who you're speaking to. Hi. -o. Hi. <laughs> Greetings from the bathroom. I've been feeding the baby, so. Oh my god. <laughs> You're cute. I have my baby. Miss Pizza. Hello. Oh, did the kisses. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> You have a smaller baby though. Oh my yeah, she needs the bottle. How old? Uh, she's five weeks tomorrow, actually today, but um, she's the size of a two week old. So we're working on it. Happy birthday, yeah. Happy birthday Panda. <laughs> so cute. Happy birthday. Yeah. Are you gonna make a poop? Oh, good. <laughs> We thought about it earlier, but we only peed. So now we're going to poop. <laughs> <laughs> That's, welcome. Welcome to the pet poop panel. Uh, <laughs> Good solid poop, baby. <laughs> I mean, pet owners understand it. You can have a solid, con a solid conversation about poop. And it's like an important thing. <laughs> Firmer than yesterday. Firmer than yesterday. That's a good color. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so the room itself will activate in about a minute okay. and what we'll do is they'll come all in i'll keep an eye on chat okay and um if you like it's it's up to you what your preference is if you want i can say hey that's a great question uh star fox do you want to unmute and ask it yourself or I can just say, great question, and I can ask it. It kind of depends on how much interaction you want with the guests. Um, I, I think nope. it, it'll be fun. No wrong answers. No wrong answers. We have three staff in here as well. So if anyone acts up like a dick, they're out. OK. Um, I would say it's probably fine to let them ask their own questions, but if mm -hmm. you kind of get a sense that they start to maybe uh, start trailing with the question or they start getting yeah. really, really nervous. Maybe we'll just mute them out and ask it ourselves then. Yeah. 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 Just kind of start maybe surmising it for them if they start getting like really, really nervous or something like that, just so that the tension is able to ease off and it's you, you got know. it. Yeah. 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 And I see people are starting to roll in. Welcome, everybody. We're going to give it a couple minutes for uh, the people to come on in. I'm going to stop my video because no one's here to see me, unless you are. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, 12 o'clock on the dot. We've got people coming in. This is perfect. Hi, baby. Go with your babies. Yeah, we definitely. Oh, hi, Ruben. Ruben wants to see Panda. Here's Panda. Excellent. His name is Panda. Yeah, it's Panda. You're a panda wrangler. <laughs> He's a panda bear. You're pandering. I'm pandering to the audience. Okay. Down, down you go, baby. All right. Now people are really coming in. So welcome, everybody. Uh, we're here with Bryn April. She's a voice actress. She's amazing. She's super kind enough to join us here today to ask and answer questions with all of y'all. So if you want, open up the chat on your Zoom. There's a button that says chat. And I will be reading through, picking the amazing questions that you ask. And uh, I will uh, select people. I'll let you know to unmute if you like, if you want to ask it yourself. Or I can ask it for you if you're feeling a little shy, a little tongue-tied. I get it. Uh, in the meantime, Bryn, if you want to introduce yourself, I am going to turn off my cam now because everyone's seeing the kitty. <laughs> um, hi everybody, uh, my name is Bryn April, uh, I'm a voice actress and I've been in the industry for about, oh my goodness, for about eight years now. Uh, I started when I was in high school, uh, the summer before my senior year, and I've been working with studios like um, 
Funimation Entertainment, Okratron 5000. I've done some work with Sentai, uh, with Soundcaden Studios. Uh, I've done some gaming work as well. And um, I'm so excited to be here and chat with you guys. Uh, if anyone has any questions about um, working on in voiceover or how to get started or just general questions about some shows, uh, yeah, I'd be more than happy to answer them. I'm just really, really excited to chat with you today. I've actually got a question straight off the bat. You mentioned you started in high school. Um, people's voices, women's too, are still changing throughout their late teens into their 20s. How has that affected your work at all? Or has it not been an issue? Um, I, I It's so weird because I, 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 <laughs> I don't tend to like to listen to my earlier work. And so in my head, I had that, oh no, my voice was, was totally done changing and it's, it sounds the same now as it did then. But I did listen to some of my, my first stuff I ever did, which was like um, Data Live and uh, Fairy Tale recently. And it does sound crazy different. Um, I don't know if it was, whether it was uh, just that I wasn't quite comfortable in myself in the acting in front of a mic yet, or whether it was really just that my voice was still a little bit younger, but I was very over enunciated. I, I, I just wasn't really speaking more comfortably yet and just kind of relaxing my consonants and everything. But yeah, it, it did have that, a little bit younger tone to it, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit more breathy, a little bit more insecure, not quite sure of herself. Uh, but now it's just got a little bit more tone to it and a little bit more heartiness to it. But uh, I think it, it's it's weird that um, I almost sound more sure of myself now which I think is something that just comes with age but it also mm. carries over in voice and I was like oh that's so weird and so now when I have to play a younger character I kind of think back to that to okay where was little teen year old Bryn when she was not quite sure of herself yet she was still very insecure she wasn't confident okay get in that headspace and then just let your voice just float <laughs> like so it's, it's pretty weird. <laughs> That's cool. I, I know um, headspace and emotion do have a lot. People may not realize how much it shows in your voice, but like if you're pretending to be happy and you're not happy, people can tell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So with that in mind, has there been a particular role that you are, like was so opposite of your own personality that you found it difficult? Or is that just part of the whole actress bit where you're like, no, I can be anyone? <laughs> Yes. Um, <laughs> I've had two roles that I feel like were probably the most opposite of me. And one of them was very recently. Um, one, I got to play a little like psychopath killer for this uh, show called King's Game. And I absolutely loved it. I ate it up. <laughs> I see someone snapping. And I, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and it was so much fun. And that one, weirdly, I was able to sink into very easily because I love my true crime <laughs> podcasts and my little shows. And like, I love watching like Criminal Minds and stuff like that. And so I was like, oh, I love it. And so I was able to just sink into it and was like having the time of my life. But the other one, and I feel like this speaks a lot <laughs> for who I am as a person and it's very sad. Um, <laughs> was for a show called Listeners. And that was very recently. Um, and it's a, an amazing show. It's all about um, like music and like these huge mecha fighting robots. And it's, it's crazy, but it's cool. And it's got like all these characters that are designed after like uh, famous musicians. And it's so cool. Um, <laughs> note to self, check out Listeners. <laughs> do it's so good um but uh my character is this total like 
doesn't give a ish like <laughs> bam 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 like i'm gonna say what i want i'm gonna do what i want i'm so confident like I, mm, 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 girl and <laughs> my director chris george uh he was so often saying to me like you're trying so hard to sound cool in your read just be cool and i was like right just be cool <laughs> It was so sad. I was like, I can't just be cool. I'm trying to sound cool. I'm such a poser. And I was like, <laughs> it was so sad. It was <laughs> you can't force the cool, Bryn. You've just got to be cool. cool. You can't force the confident. You just have to just let it go. Just, just rip it. Just be it. I was like, okay. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely in a learning exercise, but, uh, I, I, I loved every minute of it because that's, you know, as an actor, that's what we live for is those, those learning experiences where we get to grow as an actor. So uh, it was definitely a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And I was very grateful for it. And was it weird to realize that you could so easily understand what it was to be a psychopath? <laughs> um, it was, I didn't really think about it. <laughs> Um, I got you though I'm all about the true crime podcasts as well like do you listen to morbid (laughs) but I've always been fascinated with like psychology and I, I, I got into that mindset of okay to you the things that you're doing make total sense you can't look at this person as a psychopath you can't think oh my god she's crazy and she knows she's crazy um you have to be like no everything that she's doing is justified and makes sense. She thinks that she's in the right and that everybody else is like not understanding and is just like a baby and and doesn't get that, no, this is the way things need to be done. <laughs> like, so I had to kind of get in that headspace of, no, you guys are wrong. Things just need to be done the hard way. Like, so yeah. Do you get a lot of time to kind of explore the concept of your character and find that headspace? Um, not so much anymore, unfortunately, because uh, we're doing a lot more, well, we're doing really only um, simul dubs now. And so mm. it's a lot more, um, here's the character, find the voice, jump into it uh, because it's, week to week to week to week to week. Um, So we kind of have to find it really, really fast and then really fall into it as the episodes go. Um, It used to be more that when we were doing DVD release dubs, uh, because I was was here like right during that switch. Um, I had about three years when we were still doing DVD release and then we moved into uh, simul dubs. Um, and so it used to be to where we could do a couple episodes and we would have like all day doing those first two episodes, uh, first two, three, four episodes. And we could go back in, uh, back to the beginning if we kind of found her place around like episode two, three, we could go Mm -hmm. back to the first episode and maybe get the first few cues again once we really found that character. But now the episode's aired already. So we really got to find it really fast. I see. Uh, Shika is asking, what was your most hated role? Oh. (gasps) Oh, I know. Swim, swim from... uh, Magical Girl Raising Project. Uh, I can't, oh, I can't say any spoilers though. <laughs> oh, that's so hard, I can't explain why. But, uh, okay, for you've seen so that's, Magical that's, Girl that's Raising something, Project. Something we'll have to keep an eye out for and maybe try to figure it out like a little mini puzzle on our own. Like, why would she hate this? Hmm. Uh, people who have seen Magical Girl Raising Project you know, if you know, you know, it was definitely Ah. swim, swim. (laughs) People were like, (gasps) (laughs) Uh, Ruben, uh, perhaps going off the whole psychology thing, 
asks, inside your own mind, do you think in pictures, words, an internal voice, or something else? Um, if I am reading a book or something, I have an internal voice and I will also like visualize a character or something, but usually it's like a still. I won't like see the character going about. Um, I will I will just visualize the character and then I will like have the voice talking over them. I will have my internal voice going over them. I won't actually see the character going about this activity. Like I don't have the movie playing in my head as I read. Oh. That's um, awesome. I'm the same way. It's like uh, freeze frames of, of yeah of something. Yeah. yeah. Or if, if they're like describing like a scenery, I'll just see the scenery. I won't see it moving or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm going about my, uh, I, I was about to say daily day. <laughs> if I'm going about my <laughs> daily day, um, <laughs> uh, I will actually, I will very often talk to myself. I will very very much so often talk to my dog, uh, <laughs> like actually verbalize it. But I, I definitely have the internal voice going frequently. <laughs> God, I'm the same way. That's weird. I have a terrible visual uh, thought process. I can't visualize things much at all. Um, Jess Lee asks, what's your favorite thing about Miku? I love her and Zero too. Oh, goodness. Um, I love Miku's sass and I love oh I love that she's not afraid to speak her mind even if it's going to hurt feelings um because that's that's something that I am not capable of like I am just such a people pleaser that I very often will keep things to myself even uh, at the risk of being walked all over, <laughs> especially when I was younger. Um, and I, I really, really wish that I could incorporate some miku is especially into my younger self, and I could have spared myself a lot of hurt. Um, <laughs> and I feel like uh, Zero Two had a lot of that as well. Um, she, she, she wasn't about to take no Mm -mm, from nobody um they're very much so two very strong female characters um and i i, I think that's really great to see in show of um very mixed uh gender cast that they very much held their own i think that mm. was great to see i love a strong female mm -hmm. um Perhaps connected to that question, Shika would like to know if you've ever used your voice talents for evil. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Not, not quite sure what that would entail, but oh, you, you do know. Excellent. <laughs> I don't know if it's evil, but I've used them for like uh, my own benefit sometimes. Like, uh, okay, everybody at this point, if you have social media, you've seen the like, we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Like everyone's mm. seen that, okay? <laughs> but I have definitely used uh, my voice talents for, <laughs> for getting myself off the hook for that. Um, <laughs> Cause I've been like, yes, hello. Like, or like been like, <laughs> that was a terrible example. I don't know. But like, I've if I keep getting it from the same number, I'll just be like, I'll start speaking in French or I'll start, uh, or I'll start talking like a like a very old lady, and be like, "Oh well, I'll 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 call my husband over, Frank, Frank." Like, and I'll just like, I'll I like, <laughs> "Oh, don't worry, he'll he, I'll get him on the phone, <laughs> and then he can explain everything. I'm sure." Like, you know, like I just like. <laughs> I don't know. You just <laughs> just to get them to not. It's just oh, uh, I you get understand. you. I'm sure everybody who has a phone understands. The spam calls are <laughs> out of control. Absolutely. 
Um, and also, good on you, because they're scammers, and they, like, ruin people's lives. So, yeah, screw them over. <laughs> uh, Ruben wants you to know that that online, the uh, internal voice is a sign of genius. So, woohoo. Woo! <laughs> and also that you are his hero for sticking it to the telemarketers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Jess comments that Yotsuba has five sisters, and that is a lot. But who is your favorite Quint? I don't want to say Yotsuba because I voice her. <laughs> but she is such a good bean. Like, <laughs> she's such a good bean. Um. It used to be Nino until this season. No spoilers. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is it bad to say it's Yotsuba? <laughs> no, not at all. It is. I just like, because she's such a bro. <laughs> she's just such a bro. And she has been since day one. She's she's just she's been that one that's like, let's go to all the rooms and let's get all the sisters out. Come out. No? Okay, I'll try the next one. Like she's just she's just along for the ride. Even when everybody else is like, no, go away. It's just great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and she just her little bean sprouts and she just, she is a good bean. I just, I, yeah, it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> Jess has another question. Uh, wondering if you have seen Love is War. <gasps> Kaguya-sama? Yeah, I actually voice uh, a character in it. Um, it was, I, I absolutely love that show. It's so zany. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think that that's what, is is it Kaguya-sama Love is War? Is that the show that you're asking about? I don't know. <laughs> unless, in, I mean, unless there's another show called Love is War. Um, I'm cosplaying, cosplaying Kaguya today. Yes. <gasps> That's awesome! Ooh! I love it. That's so cool. Yeah, make sure you get pictures of that and then uh, we can upload them onto the PortCon social. That's so awesome. <laughs> cool. Uh, have you ever voiced a character that is so like you that it was super easy to voice? Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, I have a couple ones. Uh, actually, funny enough, uh, Yotsuba from... Uh, Quintessential quintuplets is very much in my happy place to voice. Um, and the director for it is um, one of my absolute best friends in the entire world. And so anytime we go into a session, it's just, I mean, it's chaos, but it's wonderful. It's glorious chaos. Um, and we're just like having a blast the entire time. Um, because I love sitting up here and I love being like, ah! <laughs> like I mean, it's just that's that's me on the daily. So, <laughs> um, and then the other one is um, from a show called Interviews with Monster Girls. And I play uh, Hikari Takanashi, who is the goodest little vampire girl. And <laughs> also just pretty much me in a nutshell. And um, one of the other, I mean, I love every single member of the cast, but one of the other actors in the show, um, the, the man that plays uh, the teacher, uh, is voiced by Chris George 
And the dynamic between those two characters <laughs> is literally our dynamic. And so, I mean, the show could have literally just, I mean, well, at least our scenes could have literally just been like, Chris, Bryn, improv. And we could have just been like, hello. And he could have been like, oh my God. And I would have been like, how's your day been? And, and that would have been, I mean, it, it could have been the script. And it's just, I mean, it's, it's us. And so it's, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. <laughs> and we talk about it all the time because it's, it's a showcase of our, our relationship. It's, it makes us happy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Julie chimes in to agree that interviews with monster girls is a cute show. And Scott says he loved your performance in Show by Rock. And how was it to voice Cyan? Oh, thank you so much. Um, oh my gosh. I that was one of the first show. Well, that was the one of the first shows that <laughs> my singing was released in. Um <laughs> I, I did some singing for a show when I was uh still 17 called Red Data Girl, but uh, we weren't able to sep sep separate the Japanese uh, dialogue from underneath the track. So it didn't get to be released, unfortunately. Um, but that was, I think the first show that I'd ever sung for that uh, got released. And I was so nervous about it because I'm such a perfectionist. And I was like, oh my God, because <laughs> singing is a very, very personal thing for me. And I was so nervous and I felt so bad because I made the director and the engineer go through oof with me because I was like, no, let me do another take. Let me do another take. It was so bad. And they were like, it was fine. I was like, no, it was so bad. <laughs> So we had to do so many takes. <laughs> I felt so horrible. But um, it it was such an amazing experience. And I loved the character and she was so cute. And she was so like, eh, all the time. And, and <laughs> I love cute things. And having it be Sanrio, which is a franchise that I'm obsessed with. I'm obsessed with it. Um, <laughs> I was so excited and I, I still, I remember when I heard that I'd gotten the audition and I was just like, <gasps> like I was so thrilled. Uh, it was the best experience ever, ever, ever. <laughs> Julie, uh, has spotted that you have a, a floof with you Ooh. and she, she's hoping that you can tell us what the floof's name is because floof is adorable. Petey. Petey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is Petey. He's my baby. This is a baby Pete. Yes. He likes to lick up noses, but I'm not going to let him. And he's my little rescue baby. Petey, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's my little rescue baby. I've had him for about three years now. He's four years old. Um, I he 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 came to me via being thrown out someone's car window. <gasps> um, yeah, uh, someone from the rescue saw it happen, and uh, they were just like. And they worked for, funnily, funnily enough, a Chinese crested rescue. And they were like, I know he's not a Chinese crested, but I can't just leave him here. And so they went and they picked him up. And during that time, I was looking um, at different rescues and on Pet Finder and stuff like that. And I have uh, specific uh, allergies to specific breeds of dogs. And um, so I had like schnauzers and Yorkies and like um, Maltese and stuff like that, that I could uh, adopt. So I had that selected on Pet Finder and he popped up and I saw he was at a Chinese Crested Rescue and I was like, what? But I went and met him and 
it was love at first lick up into the sinuses. And so, <laughs> so yeah, he was just, I mean, he's, he saves my life every day. And I mean, the fact that he can still be so absolutely loving and has just been so forgiving to people after what he went through is absolutely amazing to me. And yeah, he's, he's my, he's my little prince. My sweet prince, and I love him. You are a literal angel. Uh, just <laughs> throwing that out there. Um, Shika wants to know if you've ever scared a director by getting into character too well. Oh, let's see. Also, your little fun buns are super freaking cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like today I'm going to like first grade because I have like my <laughs> peanuts shirt on and my overalls and I'm like, it's time for school. Like, <laughs> um, let's see, getting into character too well. Um, I don't know about like getting into character too well, but or, I mean, I guess like when I did like when I, whenever I do like super creepy, like, ooh, villain stuff. And they're just like, what the heck? Like, just because it's like, so in contrast to me. <laughs> but, yeah, it's a literal, it's a like, literal angel Bryn. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just because I enjoy it and I like, like the psychological aspects of it. Um, <laughs> but um, I guess like, sometimes <laughs> I'll scare them because I'll like accidentally peek the mic or blow the mic uh when I do like my when I whenever I have to do like a bit for like a dying character and it's like okay now is your death scream and I'm like okay and like <laughs> they'll they'll put it at a certain volume to be received and I'm just like so excited because I love doing like death scenes and I I'm so morbid. I don't know what <laughs> and death scenes and oh, like, um, but then I'll just blow the mic and they're just like, oh, okay, we need to turn it down. Can we do it again? I'm like, <laughs> just like, sorry, <laughs> because I get so excited about it. And then I just, pop. <laughs> there goes the mic. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, Julie wonders who your favorite character has been. Oh no. And you've done a lot. So this might be, this might be rough. Like I was looking through your IMDB just to see like, oh, what's she, oh my God, she was in, um, uh, uh, really? Noragami, which was one of my favorites. And then just, I like, I kept scrolling like, oh my God, <laughs> like, so, okay, she's been in everything. But so it, it, might, it might be hard, but if you have one that's still close, near and dear to your heart, uh, who would that be? You know, I get this question every time I do a panel and every time I'm like, oh, choose your favorite child. <laughs> like. <laughs> Who would you save if they were all falling off a building? Like, you know, it's just like, oh. Yeah, it's 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 a tricky one. I I I had such a blast. I mean, doing Hiori. Um, Hikari from Interviews, the Monster Girls, um, Cyan. Historia. Oh. Yeah, they're all, they all have a, a place in your heart. You can see that. It's, it's rough, it's rough. Um, so that kind of segues into Ruben's next question, kind of neat, uh, where instead of the that hard ball being thrown at you, if you could choose a question to be asked, if there's something where you're always hoping deep in your heart, God, I hope I get to talk about this. What would that be? 
This is your chance to talk to us about literally anything. It could be uh, murder or uh, donuts. <laughs> um, ooh. Oh, wow. That is, I love that question. That's awesome. <laughs> um, ooh, okay. I don't know now. Um, <laughs> okay, I have something controversial. <gasps> Girl, dish that tea. Okay. Uh, a lot of times um actors will be involved with shows that um we may not necessarily feel comfortable well we may feel comfortable with it but we may not necessarily for our own reasons want to attach our name to mm. um and so we will choose to use a pseudonym and for as long as we've been doing it there have been a lot of people who have decidedly not respected the actor's decision to use the pseudonym and ah. will still be referring to the character as the actor because they could tell from the way the voice sounded, oh, it's you. And they will put that out into social media or just out into the ether or whatnot. Um, and I think it needs to be recognized that we have our reasons for not wanting to attach our name to the show. Um, for example, Doing voice acting, I think it doesn't pay what I think a lot of people think it does. And so a lot of us have other jobs. And that for some people could be something like teaching. Mm -hmm. And what if someone that is a teacher is involved with one of these shows and uses a pseudonym so as to avoid if someone were to search their name having that show come up and if someone is continuously if people are continuously putting out there oh no you voiced this character you voice this character and then despite them using the pseudonym this character then becomes attached to their name and it comes up when they're searched, that could be brought up the next time they get called in for you know a conference with that teacher. And they could be like, hey, why are you working on stuff like this? Uh -huh. And then that's something that they are, they are no longer able to work on those shows for income. And, you know, I'm sure that <laughs> as a teacher, they would really appreciate being able to work on those shows because that's, you know, they would appreciate that additional income. And so it's just something 
that we we just we all need to acknowledge we have our reasons and yes even if you know you are able to recognize and you have that ear to be like oh no it's that person it doesn't need to be put out there there's a reason for it so yeah that, there's that's a little controversial ooh no that's <laughs> That, that's an, an extremely good point. And I wonder if people sometimes realize, don't realize the reasoning for it, but it, it could even hurt getting jobs within the same industry. There might be, say, Disney is probably not too eager to hire someone whose only credits beforehand have been hentai. Absolutely. Yeah. So everybody here today, put that in your head. Even if you know who it is, that's great. Good for you. That's so awesome that you're such a big fan. You can recognize their voice just by hearing it, but you keep that secret to yourself. Cool. Thanks for it. Yeah, most actors aren't individually wealthy. That's very true, Ruben. Um, a lot of voice actors have uh, like two or three jobs. It's mm -hmm. it's rough. Yeah. Um. So uh, here's a <laughs> a topical question that maybe everyone's sick of hearing about, but sure is a pandemic out there. Um, obviously, studio time must have been drastically changed by all that. I know a lot of voice actors have had to make little studios within their own home and do their recording that way. How has that changed the process for you where you no longer have, say, a director in front of you or someone to work against opposite? Um, well, as far as uh, someone to work against opposite, uh, we never really had at least for the studios that I've worked with, we never really had anyone in the booth with us. Um, it could be possible that they, that there had been someone that had recorded before us and then we would hear them in the tracks, but um, we never had someone that was physically in the room with us at, 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 in regards to actors. Um, as far as having the engineer and the director there. Uh, mostly it's just missing their their presence and being able to see them and, you know, interact with them um, off the clock and 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 not um, not in regards to the actual process of recording. Um, because we're, we use something now called uh, Source Connect. And so I'm able to hear both of them and we are able to interact uh, verbally and I'm able to hear everything in real time. Um, I have, <laughs> this is gonna sound so fancy, like my whole like recording setup. I work in my closet. <laughs> I literally just take my computer in my closet and I have a little mic and headphones and <laughs> my pop screen and it's so fancy. I'm so bougie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I head in there and um, I, I connect to Source Connect and um, so and uh, they the engineer is able to see everything in real time and we have we have things coming in from the studio so we have video and uh, we're able to place things real time just the same as much the same as we would be able to and the director is in there real time as well um and we are st starting to get back into the studio now um so that's exciting uh there was a period right uh there was a period right when covid hit where we were out of work and then we started to get back into it with actor kits and during that period, um, the actor was kind of being the actor and engineer, which was very interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, that lasted just for a few months. Um, and then, uh, well, I mean, I say the engineer, we, we engineered the session in real time and then it got sent off to the professionals who did all the fine tuning. Um, but now we're doing all pretty much Source Connect or uh, the few sessions in studio. So yeah. That leads us into some of uh, some technical questions. Uh, do you have a favorite brand or model of microphone? Carissa wants to know. Um, 
if you're just starting out, you don't want to invest in the fancy oodle boodle. Um, when I was just starting out, I got a blue microphone that was just a little USB microphone plugged right into my computer. And <laughs> oodle boodle is the best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I, I got the stand up blue. I didn't get the that one. I got the stand up blue. Snowball, I, I think it's called. Yeah, I didn't get a snowball. I got the stand blue one. And I used that for five years. And I was getting plenty of auditions using that. Um, uh, and, and when you upgrade to a fancier one, then you have to get an interface and like just and and it took me because I'm not tech savvy um <laughs> it took me a while to figure that out like the only reason I figured it out is because I use it now for recording so I had to figure it out because of COVID um and that was only with help from the engineers at Funimation <laughs> so <laughs> otherwise it would not have happened um but and it works wonderfully now like i'm getting great studio quality stuff with my setup now but for doing like stuff for youtube or for doing auditions to send into studios or for doing like a demo reel that blue microphone that's usb it's gonna be great Sweet. Good to know. Uh, so guys, don't spend all your money. You don't need to. Yeah. Um, get a pop screen. Do get a pop screen. Oh, God. Yeah. For those letter yeah. P's. For those plosives. I mean, because nothing can ruin a reel or a take more than here and a <laughs> like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and that'll, <laughs> you know, that'll show that like, you know, you're a little bit more pro than someone else that'll make a little bit more separation. pop in your peas yeah um here's another technical question what's the difference between contract work and non-contract work um pretty much i've i've really only ever done contract work um i mean if, if you're non-contract you're you're hired um like and and that's like the directors and the engineers and stuff like if you're if you're contract if you're a contract worker um you're you're working for um like either the span of a certain show um some some studios will do it like they'll do a contract for like the span of one show or um one season of a show or whatever um other studios will do it for like um a general contract where it's like uh for whatever show you are cast for um so it'll it'll work for however many shows that they do um you are going to get this rate or whatever and mm -hmm. then if your rate goes up or whatnot, you sign a, a new one, so. Here's a question I always like to ask, and you totally don't have to answer it, but do you have a standard vocal warm up? And if so, can we hear a little? Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so it used to be, this is so bad. I, I am really, bad I am a bad bad boodle um <laughs> so it used to be I would do some tongue twisters and then I would do um some scale humming some ooh humming and then I would sing in the car on the way to work which you're not supposed to do because your diaphragm ain't engaged because you're sitting down um <laughs> but that's what i would do and it's, it's bad uh but that's what i did uh because uh a lot of shows 
uh, that I'm cast for usually sit pretty much in my happy place. If I was doing a show that was not in my happy place, that was very low register, or that was a lot of screaming, I did not do that. Hmm. But the ones that were like, just kind of like, like, for example, if I was doing a, a Yotsuba session, that's what I would do. Um, if I was doing a Titan session, it was going to be a really heavy Titan session. I didn't want to do a lot of singing because I didn't want to start wearing out my voice already. Um, but some great ones are just the general tongue twisters. You can look up any tongue twister. Um, or I have, I have some words that I have realized that I stumble with over the years. Every single time it shows up in a script, I, I know I'm gonna mess it up just because I have over the years. Um, because if you don't know, uh, we are cold reading everything uh, for our scripts. We, we've never seen the scripts before. Um, and so every time it pops up, when I see it, I'm like, oh, here it comes. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I'm gonna stumble. Sorry guys, we're gonna have to get this again. Um, like, and so one of them is managed to, it's that mm. d two, because I don't know what it is. It's managed to. I always stumble. And so I'll do that. I'll be like managed to, managed to, managed to, managed to, managed to, managed to. And I'll just say that over and over and over again until I really feel good. And I'll be like managed to, managed to, managed to manage to, manage to. And I'll just do it with different inflections. So I'm ready for whatever comes. <laughs> um, and um, another one that's really good is um, humming is really good. Um, I, I can't tell you the like super like technical things about it, but it just, it allows the vocal cords to vibrate at an easier. Um, There's less strain on them. Yeah, it's it's yeah. less strain on the vocal cords for humming than, oh, it's it's placement, it's placement. That's what it is. The placement is more relaxed in the mouth than trying to figure out the open mouth placement because sometimes it's like, I remember when I was doing a uh, vocal uh, training I had a vocal co vocal coach that initially trained because she was older. She trained me to sing really, really far back in the throat and you're not supposed to do that. And it really screwed me up for a long time. And I, eventually I found a better coach that was like, no, 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 no. It's not singing far back in the throat. It's singing this way. Um, or in the case of musical theater, it's singing this way. Um, and so, uh, eventually I, I got it all figured out, but for humming, it's closed. And so it's very relaxed. And so you just go up and down on the scale. Um, and eventually you can open it up to an, Ooh, cause that's going to be, Ooh, Ooh. And you can feel the vibration in your nose and sinuses. And that's pretty good. Um, and again, just do the scale. Um, I just, I do a lot of my vocal warmups from when I was in vocal performance, honestly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But yeah, those are the ones that tend to stick with you. The ones from yeah. early, like chorus and, and whatnot. I still use the ones from college, the cinnamon synonym and Eisenhower Eiffel Tower. <laughs> uh, what advice, and this is, this is a big one that everyone always likes to know. I'm sure you've heard it before, but we want to know your take. Someone who's trying to break into the business, what what's the best advice that you would offer that person? Um, start acting classes right now. Um, I, I know it's like COVID times, but there are still um, Zoom classes. Um, It's hard, you, you gotta find people that are, you know, reputable, but uh, if nothing else, 
get started at uh, your local community theater. I mean, that's what I did. I got started in school. I was in school. Mm. All I'd ever done was stuff in school. I mean, you know, like, hey. Um, but um, started in acting classes. Um, And then step after that would be, it used to be that you could do uh, open call auditions, but I don't see people doing those as much. Yeah, for, the cattle calls have really, really dried up, even in the big cities like Houston yeah, and they don't Dallas. Do it now it's, it's much more send in your demo reel. So um, there are uh, places that you can go um, like different, uh, audio, like studios that will have like that specialize in doing things like demo reels. So I'm sure like you could literally, like I got recommended a place, but, um, for wherever you are, you could probably look up like, places that can do demo reels um, and like it's basically you, you, if you want to do um, animation stuff, um, pull some lines from shows and show what you would do with it. Don't try to copy what you hear. Show what you would do with the character. Um, and then if you want to do commercial work, get some commercial um, bites, sound bites, clips. Uh, scripts, basically. Mm. Um, and just do couple seconds of each thing and make them all like a different vibe, a different feeling, um, just to show your range. Um, and then, you know, you can submit them to an agency and they could get you in, co in contact with different studios instead of trying to get in the door yourself because studios are much more likely to be receptive to an agency than to just an individual. Um, like if, if, if you come in through an agency, you're probably going to get put here on the list. If you like to get an audition, if you come in just as yourself, you're probably going to get put here on the list. You're still going to be on the list to get heard. It's just probably going to take a little more time. Um, yeah. Uh, and if you, if you do start with an agency and your reels are just kind of like, eh, they'll probably be like, okay, we're going to get new reels and you're going to go here. You know, um, I did not have great luck with the agency I went to, but that's just because they tried to screw me over. Um, they were still a great agency and they do great work for other people. Um, it just didn't work for me. And I probably will try a different agency in the future. Um, but yeah, just, just, look at who they have on their roster. If you decide to go the agency route, you do not have to, a lot of people do not. And make sure it's got some people that you're like, I, I like your work. You can listen to their reels um, and make sure they're doing current work. Look at their resume, make sure they are currently booking. And, um, make it and if you are interested in doing film stuff see if they have anyone that looks like you um mm. if they don't they're much more likely to take you aha uh -huh, because you would be you would fill a niche that they're not able to fill at that but that's that's awesome we are just about wrapping up so i guess for the our final bit um bryn if you have any um parting words or a life motto or um something you want everyone to take home with them today, be it a personal affirmation or a knock-knock joke, uh, we are open and we love you. Um, uh, everybody 
just, you know, stay safe, find the things that make you happy. Um, get out there, try new things. Uh, really, really do seize the day because tomorrow it's too late, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's absolutely true. Bryn, thank you for calling in. Uh, you've been like literal sunshine on oh. my, my monitor and Petey's freaking adorable. Oh. <laughs> he knows it. Oh, he's asleep. Oh, <gasps> okay. He's asleep. Are we going to get the, it's a Petey. <laughs> oh, he's sleeping. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much. Um, you're welcome to pop into any other panels that happen this weekend. You've got your Attendify code. So if something looks interesting to you, any of the game shows or other voice actor panels, um, it's it's just been super awesome hanging out and chatting with you today. I know um, everyone, it, you know, thank you. And thank you for being so gracious with your answers. Um, that, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. I had such a great time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone say goodbye. Bye, guys.